So you're with your friends and you're thinking, uh, what should I bring on my, you know, day trip? We're going for a bit of a hike, or you know, we're going for a drive, or we're going out for dinner. But you still want to capture the moment, take some pictures, or some vlog, something like that. And you don't want to carry like your 20 liter or 30 liter like giant backpack on your back. You never know, you might be going on a date. And you know, a date doesn't want to see someone with a massive backpack pulling out their, all their camera gear and showing that they uh, would rather date their camera than you. Uh, what I've kind of got here is my everyday 10 liter sling backpack, which essentially has everything that I need uh, to go out for a day's hike. Uh, when you don't necessarily need, you know, the gimbal. You don't necessarily need the whole tripod, but let's say you just want your camera, a couple of lenses, uh, microphone, things like that. That's what this bag is for. And that's what I'm going to talk about with you guys today. So the way this video is going to go, I'm going to go through what's in my bag. I'm going to talk about the kind of gear that I've got in there, um, help you kind of understand how I organize my gear, how I place my gear. I'm also going to discuss kind of use cases for why I use this bag. If you think you might like that kind of content already, I here I tend to talk about like Korean entertainment, Korean culture. I talk about videography, videos, and just do a lot of different kind of things. So if you want to subscribe to that, please do. And let's get on with the video. But yeah, if there's any of these products that you're interested in, I will put links to them in the description, uh, places that you can get it from, things like that. So as for the bag itself, it's a sling bag. Um, you kind of wear it and it kind of hangs over your back. Uh, you can kind of carry it like a messenger, but it's not really how it was designed. You carry it over your back usually. This is the Orbis 10 liter sling bag, which is one that I bought off a website called Kogan, which does ship in Australia. Um, and uh, for those camera enthusiasts, bag enthusiasts out there, this bag should share uh, a stock resemblance to another bag called the Peak Design 10 liter camera sling, I think, or Peak Design 10 liter sling. Either way, this bag really, really looks like it. So you could kind of say that this is when I talk about what's in my camera bag, it's what's in my Orbis 10 liter sling, but it's also what's in my Peak Design 10 liter sling, I guess, because they are very similar, almost like identical twins. In terms of how I feel about this bag as a whole, I really love it. Um, it keeps everything quite compact and the weight is not too heavy. I think it usually is about six kilos, something around six kilos. I could probably take it up to eight if you start attaching a tripod down here. So firstly, what we've got here is the main compartment. In the main compartment, uh, you kind of see it's a bit empty, uh, but usually there's the uh, camera that I'm filming on right now. There'll probably be some beer all of that. Um, so I usually have the Sony a7 III in here. It has the 24 millimeter uh, Sony 24 mil G Master f1.4 lens kind of full frame attached onto it usually because that's my main vlogging lens that I'll be using. And the reason why uh, I'd like to use that instead of what I'm shooting on now, which is the uh, Zeiss f4 16-35, is because of those low light situations. So when I do go out kind of drinking with friends, I kind of want to know that, um, or if I go out with friends, I do want to know that if we go into such a really dark bar or a dark restaurant, that I'll be able to get that shot. So then what I like to do is I get this flap here, push it down, and I just have this resting here. Um, and essentially this is the case for my Zoom H1. It's a handy recorder. Um, even though you can easily just put your microphone on top of the camera, and use a shotgun mic like that. I really love using a recorder mic. The quality of my audio just increases significantly and the fact that you can have a, a recorder and just use it on people's faces, uh, just record people's foot faces and also attach it to a lav mic, put the Zoom recorder in their pocket, have them do a chat, do a little bit of an interview where the camera can be a bit further away. Because if you use a shotgun, the camera has to be really close. So you're limited in what kind of shot you can get. Usually what I've got in here, is a the Rode VideoMic NTG. That's my shotgun mic that I use. Uh, but outside, I'll put the shotgun on the camera and I'll probably have the recorder using separate stuff or using it with the lavalier, as I mentioned. And all this is essentially a tabletop tripod. It goes like this. Um, you can put a flat or you can do this. So it goes like this. A little bit higher, not significantly higher, um, but still, like it's very sturdy. I got this one. I do have the Manfrotto Pixie Mini tripod thing, and I did have Gorilla Pods. Don't like Gorilla Pods. I also attached a ball head onto here with a, I think, Arca Swiss plate is the right term, so that I can quick release my camera, take it on, take it off um, very easily. Next thing I do is I have this for my a7 III. For those of you that do have the Sony a7 III, you should know what I'm talking about. 
Uh, it doesn't have a flip screen. And though the new camera I've heard about the, A the A7S II does have a flip screen, um, before that I was stuck with a camera where I couldn't really tell what was in the frame, what I was shooting a lot of the time. So if I shot a vlog or if I was doing like an eating shot where I'm at a restaurant, it was really hard to tell if I was in the shot and the food was in the shot. Um, so I would just rely on using a 16 millimeter lens to make everything really wide, just to assume I'd get everything in the shot. But anyway, luckily I picked up this, which basically when you flip out the camera, you can use this mirror and it will kind of show you what's in frame. Very useful, but it does start to make your setup a bit big and vertically tall. What we've got here is my second lens. Um, and so basically if I usually carry the 24 mil f 1.4, and um, that's usually on the camera. And if I want to start to take photos of my friends, take some cool portraits of people and subjects, so not landscapes, I'll be looking at uh, one long lens as well. So either an 85mm, which this is the Sony 1.8, f1.8 85mm, or the Sony 50mm f1.8 as well. And that'll be just in the cushion just in here. Now I'll just stay there. So next we've got this white flap here, which carries a bunch of things. Um, batteries, microphones, SD cards, things like that. Usually I've got two spare batteries and the one battery in the camera. So I've got, we've got this, which is just some SD cards, um, which is cool. Here, we've got a lav, I forgot what it's called, but it's a road something lav. Um, and essentially uh, I tend to use this plugged into the zoom microphone, as I mentioned. Uh, if I want to get like interviews and stuff like that. Very simple, straightforward. Um, I am going to go through this part in a second, but let's just go to the outside. This is an Aperture light. Uh, I think it was only about 60 bucks, but very useful. Um, it gets really bright, so it's tiny, but at its most bright, it's quite um, illuminating. And this is definitely too strong because my eyes hurt, but very useful. So let's say, for example, we're in the dark. Um, I'll put this onto the code shoe of the camera. I'll also have a mic someone lapped up and I can do an interview with myself talking about the evening and talking about where I am. This is just a Peak Design strap, uh, which I usually use with my Sony a7 III. So right here is something that actually has been a lifesaver for me. It's a set of ND filters. If you don't have ND filters, really consider getting them because um, when you're outside and you've got a normal lens, there's no way, it's very likely you're going to be pushing your aperture to like f20. It kind of is like sunglasses for your lens. So you can put it at um, f1.8 still while shooting in the sunlight. Now, I did say that I carry a lot of microphone stuff. This is the last ones I promise. So this is something that I've been tossing up whether or not to keep or not. It's called the Rode Wireless Go, uh, which is essentially um, a wireless transmitter so, so you put one side into the hot shoe cold shoe of your camera you plug it in and you put the other side on the person this itself is a microphone i have used this and i do like it but i found myself worrying more because of the fact that the wireless system uh, if there's no direct line of sight these things will cut out on you so if the person turns or someone runs in front of the between the camera and between the microphone there is going to be a cutout and i would rather just have the zoom a microphone that I mentioned, I'd rather just have them on their person um, because then it's not a wireless setup, it's wired, but it's more reliable. Uh, so even though this is more convenient because it records directly into the camera, it there is a bit more risk. So I haven't really decided if I want to go for convenience or risk yet. So now uh, onto the final step of this bag. <laughs> Something I didn't mention is that, you know, because we're 2020, COVID is important, staying safe is important. I tend to leave space for like health related stuff. So masks, um, wipes, a bag for like dirty masks, dirty, dirty wipes and stuff like that. And um, also this little uh, hand sanitizer gel, like a compact form of it, which is always recommended. So you can sanitize on the go. And a battery charger. I use this on my phone. I use this for the aperture. That pretty much wraps up everything that goes in this bag. So when are you going to use this kind of setup? When would I use this Sling Messenger setup when I go out? It's obviously when I don't need a laptop. If it's a working day, very unlikely that I'll be carrying this unless I'm leaving my laptop at the office. I'll tend to use this when I'm going out, like on a day trip with friends, on a Saturday or a Sunday we're going out. Uh, and it's perfect for that. It fits everything that I need. 
Obviously, it's when you don't really need a gimbal. You can't fit a gimbal anywhere on this, and you don't really need a tripod. Now, that being said, you can fit a tripod in here with, uh, you know, these these kind of things which are, exist on a lot of messenger bags, a lot of bags where they go on the bottom of the bag, and you can just put the tripod legs through here. Um, that is possible, and I have done it, but uh, it is not comfortable. It doesn't add a lot of weight onto the whole setup, but when you consider how large a tripod is and then the way it kind of disrupts the balance in your bag, I would say it does start to become protruding and a bit obvious and less minimal, I guess, in when you're going out. So instead, what I like to use this for is just where I put my jacket. So like usually when I go out, I bring like a you know windbreaker or a light jacket. Yeah, you can just slip that through here very easily. Uh, thanks so much for watching my what's in my camera messenger slash sling bag. Um, I think that this bag is something that I'm going to be using a lot once COVID ends, when I'll be going out more and don't need something super, super heavy that's going to drag me down. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what's in your bag. Um, let me know if you have any questions, you know, if you're struggling to make any big decisions between like, you know, Sophie's choice, like, should I keep this, not keep this? Uh, tuck a message in the comments and I'll definitely get back to you. And if you did like this kind of content, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will be posting often. So yeah, uh, catch you guys later.